this is critical thinking on the integumentary system and let's look at the questions so here is kind of a clinical problem and you have to come up with the right answer and here again is to identify the incorrect statement I'm giving you a lot of these kind of questions just just so that I can um, have a lot of statements in the answers and then show you how you must look at the answers and see which one is incorrect uh, based on either the question or based on you know uh, what the situation uh, uh, what the structure that is being talked about uh, it, uh, you know how it relates to that and then here is uh, this is actually fairly simple but I want you to see some sometimes how to use common sense even if you forget uh, what is uh, the right choice let's go to this one where it tells you that this person is playing outdoors and what you see is flushed skin so you see flushed skin and profuse sweating so those are the two so these are the operative words here flushed skin and profuse sweating and it asks you the reason for his appearance which means reason for his flushed skin and profuse sweating so let's look at the choices. The first one, which says his sebaceous glands are working overtime. Now, this is not one of the answers because when the sebaceous glands work overtime, they just pour their secretions into the hair follicles, and the hair follicles look uh, uh, hair follicles are lubricated, and the skin looks a little oily. So this is not that. It won't give rise to flushed skin or profuse sweating. The second one, his sweat glands are stimulated to secrete. Yes, that could be a possible choice because that explains sweating, but it doesn't explain the flushed skin, so we have to look further. Uh, melanin is being produced in order to protect the cells of the stratum basal. Now, this by itself is a true statement when it is a hot, sunny day. Uh, you know, melanin is produced, uh, uh, you know, on uh, ultraviolet light uh, acts on the melanocytes, making them produce more melanin, but that gives rise to a tan. So the person gets more tanned. Now here we are not talking about tan, we are talking about sweating and flushed skin. So by itself, while the statement is true, this is not what is giving rise to this. So therefore, this is not a correct choice for this question. And then the last statement, which says blood vessels are dilated and sweat glands are stimulated. So sweat glands are stimulated and they give rise to the profuse sweating. When blood vessels are dilated, they, more blood will flow towards the skin. The skin will look flushed and rosy. So therefore, both points are answered by this last statement. So therefore, this is the right answer. So this is how you should answer questions when you get a whole list of these choices and see whether that choice is right for that particular answer. Now if you also look at this last choice you know that on a hot day uh, this is the body's way of maintaining homeostasis because on a hot sunny day the body temperature rises so you know your blood vessels dilate so that more blood goes to the that area and heat can be lost by radiation and sweat glands also are stimulated to produce sweat and when sweat evaporates that again cools the body so this is uh, another thing that will happen on a hot sunny day so you know that's how you come to this conclusion that this is the right choice now let's look at the next question where it asks you to identify the incorrect statement and let's look at this the epidermis gets its nutrition through diffusion. This is true. This is a correct statement because epidermis is epithelium. Epithelium, remember, is always avascular and does get its nutrition through diffusion. The second one, vitamin K is produced by the skin. This is false. It's vitamin D and actually a precursor of vitamin D which is uh, produced in the skin, not vitamin K. So therefore, this is incorrect but still you must always go down and look at the other choices uh, Susan and Tim are siblings but they have different sets of fingerprints and these fingerprints are based on the ridges made by the dermal papillary layer so this is true because the dermal papillary layer is what is responsible for fingerprints so this is also true and then the skin over your eyelids will not contain stratum lucidum remember stratum lucidum is only present on thick skin the skin over your eyelids is very thin skin, so therefore stratum lucidum will not be present. So this is also true. So based on all of this, this is the incorrect statement and therefore this is the one that you will choose. Now 
let's look at the last one where again I want you to some you know just sometimes even if you forget just read the the statements carefully and you often come to the correct answer so it says excessive keratinization is the result of excessive production of melanin now remember when there is more melanin that is produced the skin just gets darker and that is tanning uh, so that's not going to give rise to many layers of the keratin so therefore this is not the correct answer excessive scar tissue formation now excessive keratinization does not mean scar tissue is being formed you can you know person without any scar tissue can have a lot of keratinization and you know where the keratin keeps shedding uh, so therefore this is not the correct statement excessive scar tissue will form whenever there's a wound and then the wound healing goes above and beyond uh, so more and more collagen is laid and excessive scar tissue formation actually leads to something known as a keloid. So therefore that's not the right answer. Uh, excessive fat in the hypodermis and this again is not true. And if you think of this logically, if there's excessive fat in the hypodermis, how is it going to interfere with anything to do with the epidermis? You know, because you have the epidermis. So let's say this is the epidermis and then this here is the dermis. And here is the hypodermis or what is also called subcutaneous layer. So if there's excessive fat up here, it will have nothing to do with the epidermis here uh, causing excessive keratinization. So therefore, that's not the right answer. Increased activity of Langerhans cells. Langerhans cells are the phagocytic cells which are present in the epidermis. Now, if there's excessive activity, what they will do is just remove any debris or any material that needs to be removed there but that's not what is going to cause excessive keratinization so therefore this also is not the right answer and let's look at the last statement excessive production of keratohyaline granules and look at this word kerato and look up here keratin so keratinization is occurs with because of this keratohyaline granules so then whenever there is excessive production of keratohyaline granules you will naturally have more keratinization therefore this is the right choice so this way sometimes even if you forget look for words which are very similar and you'll often come to the right choice should you even forget uh, you know what you have read